Hey guys, it's Clay on the trail. Um, I'm gonna start editing a video and I've really struggled with the filming the last, since about August, I guess. Um, my wife and I set out middle of August on a trip in our canoe on Yellowstone Lake um, with my GoPro. And well, I lost the first day and a half of video and I'll, I'll explain here along the route trying to take an underwater shot while our canoe, our canoe was moving. And it, uh, well, it opened, the hydraulics of the water opened the battery door. It didn't properly open it, but it opened just enough to fill that area full of water. And it corrupted my SD card. And uh, anyway, I attempted to, I, well, I paid somebody to recover all the video footage of it and it's unwatchable. So needless to say, it's been a little frustrating. I ended up buying a new camera. I'll have some new videos out coming soon. I'm just trying to figure out the whole, you know, learning a whole new program, editing the whole works. And I guess if you'll, if you'll bear with me on, on getting these projects out. But we started at Grants Village at the marina here. We loaded all our gear into, I have a 16 foot cedar strip canoe. And we just paddled straight pretty much across this, across Grants Bay, the West Thumb here, around Breeze Point. And I guess something uh, worth mentioning here is, I believe these squares are mile. I'd have to look at the thing. But these little bays don't look like much on this map. But you're in like 60, 70 foot deep water here. And this is almost two miles across here. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it was crazy. And this is what I, what upset me so much about my camera going away. I had, uh, you know, a gooseneck clamp with my GoPro where I could just set it there and it was clamped to the side of my boat. So as we we're paddling, I was taking all sorts of video and stuff. And after that camera went away, the rest of the film, the rest of my video was shot with my, uh, my iPhone. Um, iPhone takes great pictures, but now I'm handheld. It doesn't have the same, you know, my tripod didn't work on it anymore. I didn't have any way to do anything but handheld. So it was, it was completely frustrating to say the least. Back to our trip here. We came across Breeze Point here, and we <clears throat> cut these, this bay. And our first night stop was 7L5. And I actually have a still photo of our boat here, and then this little point here that I will, this wolf point that I will start the video out with. Um, 7L5 is an A and a B campsite, so there's two campsites. There's one neutral or centered um, toilet, and then there's a, a basically a camp on either side. And we were on the left side. There was a couple of guys in a boat that had been out fishing and just catching the, the uh, I think they're cutthroats, in Yellowstone Lake and having a great time. Anyway, it was nice to visit with them. We spent the night there. The next day, we cut across here, across Eagle Bay. And we came and we, um, around this point here, is where all that seaweed and the stuff in the water was. And we were paddling maybe, you know, what do you do, three, four miles an hour in a canoe? And I just dipped my GoPro into the water. And this is where I lost all my footage from this point here. Um, I was just trying to open the battery door up. I was trying to dry everything out and I thought maybe I just shorted my, um, the battery out or something, but the camera worked, but my SD card required to be reformatted in order to use it, use it. I didn't want to lose my, my footage. So I just never reformatted the, um, the SD card. So everything from this point on 
was done by GoPro, or by, sorry, not by GoPro, by my iPhone. So what we ended up doing was paddling down into this flat mountain arm, somewhere in this area here, and uh, our next day's campsite was clear, I wanna say down into here. And we knew we had a lot of ground to make up, so we didn't end up going all the way to the end. But somewhere in this area right here, you can see the, the little creek here. Um, we heard rushing water, and I thought it sounded loud, like there was going to be a waterfall or something. So we pulled in to check that out, and it ended up just being a little creek coming down a steep hill. Um, but we found huckleberries. So we stopped here and picked a whole bunch of huckleberries. And this is where the video from my phone will will resume. Um, I have a couple videos I've done since them, or since my GoPro incident. I have, you know, I said a new, a new camera. Uh, just the whole editing on it has been a struggle and trying to figure it out. So pardon the abrupt start to this lake or this trip, you know, a day and a half in. But we will pick up right here. All right, well, I stuck my GoPro in the water, and now I'm having all sorts of errors. Oh, there's some baby fishes there. Um, we were going to stop for lunch. There's actually a campsite not very far up the way, but we heard water coming down here and thought we would stop and check it out. But in the process, we have found some huckleberries. And if these are huckleberries... And these are what's in the UN is that I've been calling cranberries forever because they're the same plant. And they are delicious. Well, this is a small, small creek that's just coming down really fast. There's actually not a waterfall. It just sounded like it should be one. So we're going to stop and have lunch and pick berries. All right, we pulled ashore again just like a hundred yards down from where we were picking berries. Uh, the motorized, or the non-motorized boats only buoy is just right there on this corner. And the reason we pulled here, this is a campsite I really, really had looked at staying, but we ended up pulling a day out of it. Um, and it's 7L9. We took a day out of our trip. And uh, had to make a couple days a little longer. But I was just curious of this one. Because Google Earth doesn't really translate this area very well at all. But i got to tell you with all the berries and everything here. and This is one of the, goodness gracious, full mouthful of bugs. And what a beautiful sight. Like I'm a little bummed. It didn't make it. Where's the bear pole here? There's got to be one. I'm just not seeing it. Um. Oh, duh. It's right there. So if there's a bear pole in there... Looks like people are camping right here. They're not really keeping the, whatever it is, the 200 feet or whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, this site's pretty. Okay, we just came around this point over here. Come around here. We gotta go out here and our camp's gonna be on the lake over here somewhere. There is a campsite over here, but we kinda cut this bay. It's right in there. 
we kind of cut this bay a little bit so we didn't get close to it. I kind of like to stop and check them all out. They're all different. They all have their good sides and bad sides. And the National Park Service doesn't offer much information on them other than their name and where they're at. All right, guys, we got to camp about four. It's probably 6.30 now. We've had time to uh, watch the lake get really, really big. I'm glad that we are now on, on, not out on it now. I just uh, stoked up a little fire. Camp set up here. It's really nice, it's close to the beach. I'm actually gonna have to hang my cook kit tonight. We got beef and broccoli going for me and hamburger and rice for Steph. Um, there's a trail that goes clear up on the hill here and there's just a toilet, like a tube and a seat sitting there. No building around it or anything and there's a meadow right there so you're just in like prime um, animal watching position while you're taking care of business. I thought that was actually pretty cool. Um, Got to figure out, I got a little water in my, in my US, not the USB, the uh, memory card port on my GoPro. And it wants me to reformat the SD card. And if I do that, I lose all my, yeah, all my previous stuff. So I'm trying to figure out if I can heat it or what I can do to dry it out. I don't have rice or anything to put it in here. Um, so I'm still working on that. But this is a good camp. It's been a good day. We got here. There was big waves when we got here, but nothing like now. But it should uh, have calmed down by morning. We're just going down to the end of uh, the south arm is our next campsite. The next day is going to be a huck. A huck of a huck of a day. And that's the day I didn't get the um, campsite I wanted and she pushed me two more down and that's like three, four more miles further on top of the 15-ish I plotted out. So we might be pulling almost a 20 miler. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so we finally saw some wildlife. That is an elk. I am not on the throne. And I am zoomed way out. But we are in that area of the bathroom. So that's pretty cool. At least I saw something. All right, guys, water's calmed way down. It's going to be partly cloudy today, but we're getting pieces of sun. Uh, we've pulled the tent down, just drying a little bit of condensation off of it. It did rain on us most of the night, but by the time we got up this morning, the outside of the fly was dry. The inside was not so much. Um, fresh huckleberries in my oatmeal this morning. We are headed, this is the south arm. We're going to have to follow the shoreline, of course, but go around. But we're going to go through that point. And our next camp is just to the left on the other side of that point. It's called Chipmunk Creek. Um, so, shouldn't be too bad of a day today. Tomorrow is going to be a huck. Okay, guys, here is a short recap of our first day. And I'll show you what we did yesterday. So the first day we started here. We went up around, around, and made camp here at Wolf Point, 7L5. Yesterday, we cut across that, went around Snipe Point. We did, there was, that's where that big cabin cruiser was. So we skipped that section of Eagle Bay, but we followed it. We went... Down, something big coming? 
Ooh, find it right in here. We went down Flat Mountain Arm, but we ended up cutting across somewhere in here. We just did not uh, go all the way to the end for sure. My, like we saved three miles. We pulled into Camp 7L9. That's the one I showed you. And then we came all the way up and around this arm. And we are staying at 7M6. Uh, today's goal, uh, sorry, our only option, is to make it to 5L3. So we are just going to be going straight down. But we do get to check out all the the bottom of this arm with all the, um, the water that's coming in it. That should be cool. Okay, guys, I'm just headed up to the... The scenic throne one last time. Something while we we're tearing down camp when I was reading the map to you. He's been coming through the trees. Right through here. And it's whatever it is is big. You can hear its footsteps and it's breaking sticks. Adds a extra dimension to your morning constitutional I gotta watch my back now but there hasn't been anything in the meadow since yesterday that we noticed Ooh. it's funny animals give off a smell and I just got a big whiff of whew, right there something and it's not here it was just there all right there's the there's the destination I'll spare you the the rest all right, just on a whim, we stopped here at 7M9 just to get an idea of the other campsites. Yeah. Big old fire, campfire ring. With the bay view, what a super nice spot. Your bear hanger. Up here, meadow view. This would be a really great spot. I think there'd be a chance of some wildlife. Viewing. Uh -huh. Oh, there's also a little smaller, more out of the wind fire ring. I don't know that that one's government issue or not, but I'm going with not. This would have been a press, what I was just saying. The view. Yeah. The. I haven't found the tent site yet. Man, there's a sign for theirs. I just tripped on ours on accident. Maybe where that second fire ring is the tent site. All right, they got a little vault toilet, similar to ours, but brown. It's way harder to find. Uh, not that I have a like a toilet fetish or anything, but I'm just curious how these are all set up. I didn't, our first site had like the obvious big old building, vault toilet, um, when you got on shore. When we stopped at that other campsite yesterday, I didn't see one, but I also didn't know to look for one. I thought once you got if it didn't have a vault toilet, like the big building one, then they didn't have them. Yeah, if I were 
I come back, I think this is a, a prettier sight than ours. Ours was pretty, and we saw elk. But this one, the meadow is right outside your campsite, not up the hill. is a red-tailed hawk. All right, we've beached again at 7N2. Um, down here in the bottom, don't look at my wife's butt. She'll be mad. Um, down in the bay, there's a little island across from us. That'd be cool. Yeah, it's super warm, the water is. Uh, pretty meadowy around here. I don't see the vault. I don't see the bear hang. The fire area. The orange dots, the toilet would be that way. Figure out where stuff is. All right, I just wasn't paying attention. The bear hang is right there by the fire, which is right. And then the, I guess, intense sights. I don't know, not a lot of flat spots. Kind of weird, kind of a weird spot. It's got a beautiful view. Lots of wildflowers. Look at the Indian paintbrush. Okay, this seems to be the tent spot. And we'll back it out a little bit, which is not too far from Steph, from the main camp. And there's another little bit of trail up here. I bet it's good wildlife viewing area. And just not a lot of trees. Enough for shade, I guess. It's really all the guy needs. And it camps right down. I'm trying to place it right there. And there's the John with a view. So yeah, they have a problem with lake trout in this lake. They are invasive and they're trying to get rid of them. So they have like commercial fisher dudes that come out here and use gill nets and whatever. But they do not observe the five mile an hour no wake zone. A dude cruised in here just water splashing over the bow and jamming. And then there's supposed to be no motorized boats down here. I guess and they have special permission that they're trapping or netting, whatever they're doing, but they're down here in the no motorized area. There is a island over here. We'll get closer to it with a patrol cabin on it. I've often dreamed of taking a job up here as a ranger but I don't want to just be a patrol guy I'd want to be a backcountry ranger of some sort and man have your wife live with you in a little cabin on a lake and you just cruise around and have to change the area of the pit toilets once in a while and make sure people are in the right spot it wouldn't be too bad of a gig So the 
water is shallow enough. I don't know if you can see them. There's fish. Like nice 20 plus inch. There's two that we've seen so far. This is an island here with a big old sandbar. And we're going to cruise around this corner. There's a little bit of a finger. That way it is pretty cool. First sign of aquatic life we've seen. All right, I don't have uh, my GoPros down. Probably will be the rest of the trip, so I'm using my phone. So it's hard to take scenery and paddle at the same time because I don't have a tripod for it. This is 7N4. I'm going to look up again because I seem to keep going right past the bear hangs. Bathroom's going to be that way. All right, well, you got me. Maybe you're supposed to use that, but it's supposed to be 10 foot high. Oh, I mean, come on now. Just got to look up once in a while. So, there's the hang. Beautiful little outlet, but I'll tell you what. Uh, didn't wear any shoes getting out of that. They'd still be in the mud. Cool little spots here. There's a few tent spots. Pretty hilly, but... bathrooms up there I don't want this day's video to be uh, all about campsites but I'm always curious what the campsites are gonna look like here because you never know what amenities they have but we only have to make I don't even know eight miles today tomorrow whew. We're gonna do 20. I wanted a campsite tomorrow and it was full. It was the only one I had to take a different one on. And had I thought about it, I would have pushed today's a little further and got a little closer. But I didn't. But yeah, that's getting out of the boat. Bigfoot's been here. Anyway, beautiful, uh, I think, meadow, wildlife viewing. As Some sandhill cranes, no. Oh. Yeah, they're sand hills. But man, the echo in here is amazing. They sound like geese, but they're not. Those were not geese. That's the sand hill They're sand hill cranes. Oh. I might not get any sleep while you were here, but holy cow. As I was about to say before the bird chorus, that was sweet. Um, you can see footprints going across here and there's like puddles of like little depressions that are full of poop. So I'm guessing the moose come out here and feed in the water. That'd be pretty. Pretty sweet. Well, I'm just gonna sit here and listen to this for a minute. Let's see, we've decided that they're not moose turds or elk turds. They're little balls of moss or whatever, and they just are piling in the low spots, but they're everywhere. So we landed here. I've been walking around barefoot. Steph has her flip-flops on. We had lunch. And she's been... <laughs> 
moose or spy buffalo, I don't know, elk. Anyway, when we get back on the boat, our feet are covered in leeches. I got nothing on me. Must be the shoes. Anyway, nice little field of flowers. On this little island right there is a ranger station. Our camp for the night is right there, but we're taking our time getting there. Welcome to 5L3. This will be our home for the night. As you can see, I've already loaded my cooler up by the bear box. Um, already have my tent set up. I have stripped down to my birthday suit, gone out into the lake, washed all my clothes, which are hanging and drying. Uh, last night, my pad started going again. Anybody that's watched my uh, Wind River High Route knows that I had like 13 air leaks that popped up on that trip alone. I just patched here and here and here now you look at the bottom of that thing every single one of these patches is on one of their seams and there's got to be 20 of them now um i believe nemo's in salt lake i may go pay them a visit i don't want to send it to them and have them just take it and get nothing for it i would buy a new one because i really love the pad but man come on but enough of the rant tent for the night um, fire pit there was quite a bit of firewood already here I brought a little bit more and we are completely completely surrounded by meadows all the way around us except for this grove of trees here and well, there's a plane going by but absolute Silence. Other than that plane. Now, if you look directly over the sign, there is a backcountry ranger station patrol office on that island. What a cool gig. Walked up a little ways from our camp. We scared these sandhill cranes out and they flew off and we came up here in the hopes of seeing some wildlife. But they are not helping. Maybe with them gone we have a chance. There is for sure a drawback to this campsite, and that is shade. Holy pooparooskies. Um, the only reason we're, it's bearable is that the sun went behind the clouds. I don't know what the deal is here, but it's way hotter here than any of the other places and I worry we've got to be same elevation as the last campsite I mean we're lake level it's hot but it's cooled off enough now with the sun behind the clouds we started a little fire just kind of hanging out. It's only like seven. Go to bed now, we'll be up at three in the morning. Can't have that. Recap. Day one started here. We went up and around. Camped right here at Wolf Point. Day two. We travel down, 
almost the bottom, but not quite. Back up and around, and down to 7M6. Today's trip was the shortest so far of all. We came down, we traveled all this. We did not go all the way into this point. We bottomed out on this point and ended up walking. Like it was water was six, eight inches deep, way out into it. Um, we kind of went into this one, but not all the way to the end. And we are at SL3. Now, tomorrow I had hoped to get Camp 6A1, but it was full and we couldn't get it. So she bumped me clear to 6A3. The only flaw with that is we have to go all the way out and around and back in would be about 15 miles. And then we've got to go around here and around there. It's going to add four, maybe five more miles to it. It's going to be a very long day. It's also the day that I was hoping to pull up to shore here and hike into Alder Lake. A lot of things going on. It's also supposed to be the day that we get afternoon rainstorms. But it seems like we've had afternoon rainstorms every day. So tomorrow is yet to be a mystery. Um, we have to get that far. Um, whether we do the hike or not, whether we get rained on all day or not, whether, whether lots and lots of things. But it has been absolutely just peaceful and beautiful down here. Waiting for some animals to pop up in this meadow, but so far not. Or uh, enjoying quite the lightning show that's been going on over there. But of course, when I put the camera on it, nothing happens. Well, guys, we're letting the coals die down. I was just telling Steph, I wish I had a steak because we've got a big old bed of coals. But I don't. Good night, and we'll see you in the morning.